Hi everyone, today I want to dive into the matter of texture scaling because this is something I have experienced um, a lot of questions um, on how to apply it and how to stretch and fit your textures on your terrain. So allow me to start with a more, not really theoretical, but let's just make simple um, examples here. So what I'm going to do is I'm putting just a plane in here. And as you can see, this plane is a standard plane scaled one and it's two by two meters. So I'm going to duplicate that and I'm going to scale this up by five, make room for it. So this is two by two, this is 10 by 10. And now we're going to duplicate that again, move it way over here and scale it up by 50. And I think these three different levels, it doesn't matter if it's 50 or five, nothing, or 100 or 200 to achieve uh, real world dimensions. Now let's go into render view go to true terrain and add a material. Let's leave the first one aquatic first one here okay and this is what it looks like right and it's perfectly scaled I mean we could change it use it whatever but in the texture mapping the texture size is one. Let's take, do the same thing here. Remember, we scaled this up by five. So let's go in here and add a material. And it's, you know, you see a lot of repetitions, but the resolution is fine. So we could change that. However, we have not applied the scale. So let's bring this back to a scale of one. So control A, scale we get more or less the same thing. But now the texture size, we scaled it up by five. So the texture size is five. And you can see it's exactly the same thing, just bigger because we applied the scale properly. And that applies to every scale. So again, 50, let's apply the scale. Remember 50, we're going to add the scale material, go to a texture mapping and it's 50 and it's the same, exactly the same thing. And from here on, we can play with displacement and material scale, things like that. Yeah. So remember how you scaled your, your terrain up. So let's get rid of all of these and put our standard um, ant mesh in there. The first one, no changes there and scale it up by 200, right? So 200, apply the scale, one, 400 by 400, 200 was the scale. So apply the scale, uh, the material doesn't look very good, but let's go in here and do the texture mapping of 200. And you've got the exact correct mesh or material on it. Now, of course you might want to change that and that's totally fine. You can make it bigger or smaller, just take care that you don't get too much repetition, but if you do, you can use anti-tile as well. But that's what it is. Now, if I'm going to a displacement on that scale of one, you don't see a lot of difference. Why is that? Because we also need to apply the scale on the material displacement. 200 times 0.1 is 20. So if I'm putting 20 in here, I'm seeing this as a maximum displacement. Does it look good? No, because we can play with 
the amount of displacement over here. It's actually quite difficult to just clicking it here, like so. That looks pretty good. Or we can say, I want to stay with 0.1 or just stay with one and then just decrease the scale in here. It's the same thing. So either you put one in here and like 10 in there, or you can put 0.5 and 20 should result in the same thing. And it does. And that's how you do your scaling of the mesh and the texture you use. Always apply it or relate it to the amount of scaling you did um, on your mesh. And that's it, actually. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye.